What's up everyone? So it's Addicted to Nature here and today we're going to be talking about the zebrafish. So the zebrafish, you can call it the zebra danio, the danio rario. Uh, they are prolific breeders. They are really fast swimmers and they are just amazingly exciting to watch. All right, and, and I have a couple of zebrafish in here. I have a, some in my other tank, but let me just show you where they are. All right, this is where they stay. You see that they're always at the top of the water, at the surface of the water, right, right where that filter is. They, this is where they stand, and this is where they will stay for pretty much 90% of the time. Um, they, are, so they swim at the surface, which means that you can also keep uh, sort of schooling fish at sort of the medium level and the bottom level along in the same tank with these guys. But what you want to make sure is that you don't keep any sort of aggressive fish. So I'm talking about rainbow sharks, I'm talking about uh, um, cichlids and, and, and gouramis, any of that stuff, uh, the zebrafish might get eaten. And you might say, okay, so I know angelfish are aggressive. Angelfish are okay, in my experience, when, if you, if you breed these or if you, if you raise these together, okay? So if the angelfish were young when you got them, they're small when you got them, and they were used to the zebrafish in the tank, they should be fine. This is a 30-gallon tank, so there's, pretty, there's a lot of room for these angelfish and the zebrafish to coexist. But once these angelfish get to sort of like the breeding age, and if they start to actually spawn, I would sort of move a lot of these other fish out of the aquarium so that the angelfish aren't sort of threatened and they don't actually reach out and bite any of these other fish. So actually, you can keep these with betas if you, if you want. So as you, we, know, we all know that the male betas are going to bite whoever else comes into they con come into contact with. However, the zebrafish I found are just too fast for the betas, actually. So they're fine with betas. Female betas are totally fine. Any type of schooling fish like tetras, you might have, you know, like guppies or, or, or even, even uh, um, uh, plecos and uh, the cory catfish. These, they are fine. And, and so I want, my goal in this video is to talk a little bit about raising these zebrafish and a little bit about the history and about zebrafish and then in the second part of this video series, so the description is gonna be in the description below, or the link is gonna be in the description below, I'm gonna talk all about breeding. And a little bit about my background, I'm a biologist. So I studied biology in college and I just love biology. It's just one of the coolest things that I think one can, can study in college. <clears throat> so if you think about it, um, with biology, we do a lot of model organism learning because if we're trying to create a, a or if we're trying to find out what the gene for, say, blue eyes or, 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 or maybe for, for, for the growth of skeletal muscle in an embryo, it's very hard for us to study this in a human. I, I, there's all sorts of ethical concerns going on, and, it's, and besides, if you're in the, you can't study really well a, an embryo that's in the uterus, and if you take it out, it's not going to survive unless you're, you have all this type of specialized equipment. So we, what we do is we use model organisms, and the one, and, and, and I'm talking about fruit flies, I'm talking about nematodes, and, and one of the biggest um, sort of the, 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 the most common model organism is the zebrafish that we study because zebrafish is a vertebrate, uh, uh, so, so it's just like us. It has a spine, it has a nervous system, it's a spine, and, and it's got hard bones. And another thing is the zebrafish is really good for developmental studies because you can see exactly how the zebra embryo is developing. The eggs are clear, so you can exactly see what the cells are doing, moving around, creating life, right? So as a biologist, I felt like it was, honestly, when I got these zebrafish, I felt like it was like a, my moral responsibility as a biologist to keep zebrafish at home. Uh, uh, there are entire labs, research labs, dedicated to studying uh, zebrafish. And a little less about, I guess a little bit less about the science. Let's talk about actually raising or keeping these 
zebrafish. So the zebrafish I already talked about are community swimmers. They like to school. Um, you can feed these any sort of tropical flake, any sort of pellet flake that is small enough to reach their mouth. Their mouths are pretty small. So anything about uh, one millimeter to, to two millimeters in, in diameter, these guys will have no problem taking. And you also wanna be sure that the fish that are, you are keeping these zebra fish with aren't going to sort of steal all the food. So as you can see, I have these sort of bigger tetras here. These are my, I think, uh, my Buenos Aires tetras. And these guys actually, they are crazy. They feed like crazy. It's like, they're like piranhas. When I drop the fi uh, fish flakes in there, they go crazy. And so I find that a lot of my slower eating fish, like my betas, my angel fish, and to a lesser extent, my zebra fish, they have a hard time sort of competing with these tetras. So I always like to feed a little bit more than I would normally so that everyone gets their fair share. Um, temperature wise, you can keep these in any sort of tropical community uh, temperature. Uh, they like, for example, I've these guys, I've never had once had to worry about the temperature as long as I keep them in that sort of 75 to 80, 80, 82 range, these guys are fine. Um, they won't die, they're really hardy animals, right? Like I said, they're really good for scientific research because also like, for example, you wouldn't want to um, do all your research on a monkey unless you, you have to do it on a monkey because it takes a long time for a monkey to mature, right? If you're studying three generations of monkeys, you're gonna, it's gonna be years uh, um, for you to actually get your research going. However, if you can do the same thing on a zebra danio, um, it's only gonna take a couple of months for each fish to grow up and have more babies, right? And you're gonna have much faster results that way. A lot of things about uh, genes that we talk about are actually were done on zebrafish. A lot of medications were tested on zebrafish. A lot of developmental studies were done on zebrafish. And, and in, the bio and in the biology circle, you're gonna see actually there's gonna be factions, people who spend their entire life studying zebrafish or people who spend their entire life during doing uh, fruit flies or, or nematodes, a type of worm. And actually I had a professor that just um, spent his entire career just studying nematodes, worms. And I think that's probably, I think that's wonderful. And I have a couple of friends working in zebrafish labs. Uh, they actually helped me breed my zebrafish the first time. So Emma, if you're watching, thank you very much for all your tips. Uh, I love you. And you know, a lot about, a lot about what I learned from school is actually applicable uh, uh, in this video. So the other thing I want to talk about is glowfish. All right. So I, I just spent this entire time talking about scientific research on zebrafish. I, and I think one of the best examples is going to be your glowfish. I really like glowfish uh, because essentially <clears throat> uh, for the people who aren't bio uh, biological science majors and they might not realize that the glowfish is really just zebrafish with a fancy gene in there that we added artificially. It's called the green fluorescent protein or the red fluorescent protein depending on the color of your glowfish. Uh, I think the original one is the green uh, glowfish and I think it's like the electric green glowfish. And that gene was from a jellyfish. And what happens is the, the gene codes for a protein that will sort of uh, fluoresce under a, a black light. And so, which is why you, saw, you see all these types of crazy lighting with uh, glowfish. But for the parents out there um, that are sort of wondering, is it safe for my children? Yeah, they are. Uh, if, you, if, if, if you're not into scientific research uh, and, and scientifically genetically modified organisms, that's a different story. However, in terms of health-wise, these fish, are, the glowfish, are not poisonous. They are not radioactive. Uh, in certain terms of uh, the ethics of glow, glowfish research, uh, of glowfish, uh, these fish aren't dyed at birth, these guys aren't sort of injected with any sort of dye. The gene is actually built in and these glowfish are sort of, it's sort of like with, with, with dogs. You have all different sorts of skin color and even humans too, right? 
<clears throat> it's a gene and these guys aren't hurt in the process. So don't worry about uh, whether or not it's safe for my child or if it's safe for me to keep at home. If I were to actually swallow a glowfish, it'd just be like eating any other fish. So, which I would never do, but just, just that's how safe they are. Um, I've tried to look for the actual scientific paper that, that tells me exactly what protein it is that they sort of uh, attach onto the GF, the, attach the GFP onto, but I haven't been able to find that. Perhaps I think it's probably hidden because I know that the Glowfish company has a patent. Um, in, in terms of Glowfish, well, how you can, or how different they are, one of the biggest differences, and I think the only difference that I've noticed, is going to be keeping the Glowfish with things like angelfish when they're bigger because the glowfish are really bright and they're swimming around really fast and I feel like that just activates the predatory instinct of the angelfish and so I've actually had time where I took a glowfish home uh, from the store and I put it in there and then about 30 minutes later my angelfish completely just devoured the glowfish and that's a it's a really sad story but I don't want the same thing happening to you guys right and um the thing about glowfish is, like I said, they're exactly the same. You can, if I wanted, I could breed glowfish with the zebrafish. And there, I'll tell you guys a story actually about uh, me going to the pet store. And here, the glowfish is about uh, five fifty, so two would be a, almost about eleven dollars, almost twelve after tax. And so I didn't want to. Oh, sorry about that. The like shaky camera there, <laughs> but I didn't want to spend too much money, right? So. I told the girl that I wanted to get two glowfish, and this was at a big brand name uh, pet store. And so she told me that she wouldn't sell them to me unless I got more than four. Well, I, I'm a broke college student. I did not have enough money. What I honestly wanted to do was probably take them home and breed them. But I mean, I told her that I had zebrafish at home, assuming that she, she like knew what zebrafish were. But I think she did, but she told me that these guys aren't the same type of fish. And genetically, they are exactly the same, except for, like I said, that GFP gene. It's a really small gene. It's not going to hurt your fish. It's not, it's, it's really just, it's inconsequential, honestly, in terms of uh, breeding these things. But she just wouldn't sell them to me. And when this stuff happens, I sort of tend to... So just sort of like cut, uh, count my losses and leave because I don't want to get in an argument with this girl. I don't want to um, sort of give her a hard time because sometimes like if, if her manager finds out, you know, maybe she might get in trouble. And I didn't want to do that to her. So I, I left. I went to another store that didn't have this rule and they sold me the same glowfish. But I just want to say these guys can, the glowfish can school with the zebra danios. Uh, these zebra danios can, can school with, with guppies. I've, if, when, I, when I used to have guppies in this tank, my zebra fish would hang out with the guppies all the time. Uh, it wasn't any sort of, it wasn't a problem with them. But uh, you might be saying, okay, so you talk a lot about the scientific part of it. Why didn't you just go into a lab or have your friends be in a lab and, and make the glowfish for you? Like I said, well, like I said, there's a number one there's a patent out i don't want to do anything illegal i think breeding them is actually illegal too uh once i did a little bit more research but you know as long as you're not selling these on a commercial scale or selling them to your friends i feel like you would be fine you're not going to get in any trouble and number two is as a biologist we are really really um hyper aware of the ethics of this sort of research because for example if i were to accidentally make a of a zebrafish mutant that is twice as likely to survive any sort of disaster, really good at competing with the other zebrafish for food. If I were to accidentally release this in the wild, it might crash a whole ecosystem, right? And we don't want that to happen. So, so with any sort of research, we follow really strict protocols and guidelines on what to do with the, the, the byproducts or what to do with these animals once you're done with them. And so I didn't want to create my own zebrafish 
create my own glowfish. I just didn't think that would be right, which is why I went to spend more than like $12 for two fish. To me, that's really expensive, but you know, that's the price to pay for science. Um, in terms of, I think I've talked about feed already, so any sort of tropical feed. Uh, these guys, like I said, if, if you've been paying attention to this uh, fish tank here, uh, they sort of hang out at the very top. And so before I, I end this video and go on to part two for breeding, uh, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video in, in, in its entirety. Uh, uh, fish keeping is sort of a really rewarding hobby. And, and I just wanted to say, you know, there's nothing better and there's nothing more uh, uh, rewarding than, than raising your own fish from a, from a little fish to a fry to sort of a juvenile and then an adult. And so what I'm gonna show you is this beta here. It's in my big jar. I sort of took them out to show you guys. And this beta I've had since it was a little baby beta, like a fry. I'm talking about like uh, smaller than a grain of rice. I fed it every day, changed the water, I made sure everything was fine, and look how big he is. You can't really see the color, but he's actually a really dark blue. And this guy brings me joy. Every day I come home from work, every day I come home from school, I just look at him and he just instantly makes my day. I'm just, I feel so proud of that. And I hope that all of you guys get to experience this one time, at least one time in your life. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is Addicted to Nature. If you liked it, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, like this video, and I will see you in part two.